Yeah. <laughs> Are we on record? Yep. All right. So, so he's also already moved himself onto his side and he kept his. Yeah. He did his. Uh, I don't care. Yeah. Did you decide you want this side? Yes. <laughs> Show the camera the square bolsters. Show the camera the square bolsters. Hey, anybody? Get those. <laughs> Sideline. <laughs> Sideline works best if you have a pretty thick, flat, square bolster. People don't roll around with now he's faced the other way, but when we turn him, you'll be able to see how this does that. This is just foam that we have cut to fit. So, all right. So the bolster goes under what sheet? The bottom, the bottom one. So we got a sanitary barrier. Ta -da! Now they're really stable. The pillow that was under the abdomen moves up to the head. Um, I've already done his back, so I don't need to do that again. What I didn't get was the lateral side. I got this part of the arm, but I didn't get the rest of the arm. And I didn't get the legs at all. So I tend, there's no right or wrong way with this, but I tend to start at the leg and the foot, allows them to settle in up there. If they're chilly, you can either use a blanket or you can bring this up and over. And then here's the table protector that it shoots. Okay, so. Three, or 538. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, this is the best position to do the feet. If you aren't going to put them sideline, then do the feet when they're laying on their back, not when they're laying on their tummy. All right. So I forgot and got lotion on this part before I did the palpation assessment for hot, cold, wet, dry. So, oh well but I remembered and got it here, and I don't feel anything particular. So I tend to hold the foot right here. Sometimes when you push against it, it goes against the edge of the table. So now in my little head, there's a couple of things going on. I am bent way over, aren't I? Okay, now I could sit or I could use this as a little opportunity to stretch a little bit. And then the same idea with the compression go with the grain and across the grain. If I want more pressure, it comes from putting the back foot into the floor, not me coming up on it. Don't don't come up on it like this, you'll hurt yourself. It compresses all of that and shoves your shoulder right up into your AC joint. You want to keep behind that right there. You can do this too. But I've worked on athletes' feet. They're big. <laughs> and <laughs> don't use your fingers. Don't. Don't, don't, don't do that. Now, the movements. If I push here, I'm getting some rotation at the hip and at the knee. And then if I come this way, I'm getting a, a movement of the bones in the ankle, with, or not the ankle, in the foot that allow inversion and inversion. See all that movement happening? So just gentle movements go a long way 
for supporting generalized joint movement all the way up the chain here. Toes. I want you to just see what's happening. Toes. And don't forget the digits. Somebody better call out a joint movement. What I do? Knee flexion. Okay, so I'm going to use that bottom sheet because I'm going to prop that foot right here for me. It's this way. And now I can use my forearm to come against that calf. Let this hand just touch, don't let it flail. Touch, see he knows I'm right there. He doesn't have, he doesn't have to wonder where that hand is, it's right there. Up into, this is the best way to get the medial side. And just by changing my angle, do you see how that Leg is changing. It's like I drive my sheet there. Meeting the calf. Is it soft? It's it's the, the attachments are closer together this way. That makes it easier to lead. And don't forget the idea of shaking and stuff. You're gonna learn that that's your best lymphatic movement right there. Those of you that might've had some exposure, um, I know they want you to do this, but this works. So you didn't have any real complaints there. I didn't really feel anything there. Uh, I'm done. So there's no sense staying in an area because you think you need to spend time with it. But I want to do, when I turn him, I want to do the same kind of movements with the other legs so that I get the same assessment process. Over here. Ta-da. So the, now I got this action with the When you go to move the sheet, see how I got either side of it right here? And then just up and tuck. So here we go. I didn't feel anything. That's joint movement. Crossed. This is that. Lean back. Push forward. Lean back. Push forward. Not, I caught a couple of you doing that. Just got a grasp. Got to get way under. Lean back, push forward, lean back. So typically students at your stage are spending too long in one spot. Have you noticed that? And um, I want you to be able to do legs prone, legs sideline, legs. I want you to be able to do that. But as we're approaching uh, midterm, you're going to not have to also start thinking about timing. And if, if you're 
going to do sideline. Legs are easier sideline. Glutes aren't. Glutes, the, the hip region is easier putting them on their tummy, prone. Just like I think the back is. Doesn't mean that we can't do them that way, but if we're going to pick the most efficient one, get this area when they're on their tummy. Get legs and arms when they're side lying in the lateral thorax, and then pick up the rest of it when they're on the spine. See the double contact? They always know where stuff is at. This is all palpation assessment. I'm looking to see, do, do, does the tissue slide? Does it have a resilient and uh, non-lumpy type of a texture? Do I feel normal um, layering of the muscles in through there? Do they flinch when I'm doing if I'm doing something and I get a flinch. Right there, they watch. That's too much. Now I didn't see it, I felt it because I had my hand right there. Flinch. Start to think about doing more than one thing at a time. So I didn't feel anything there either. The poke that made him flinch, but it was I did it. When you somebody flinches or they they start, often it's because you poked them. You got a little narrow, got up on the point of your elbow, got on the edge here, didn't change your pressure when you were getting into something a little bit more bony, you know, that kind of. The nice thing about doing the arm in this position is you can control it. Otherwise, it's all over the place. So, you see, I have the same assessment pattern position, glide, 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 need, need. feeling anything. And I'll oftentimes say that to a client, especially my athletic clients. They are always thinking something's wrong or there might be something with performance and I'll stop and I'll say, felt good. Everything felt good. Okay. What's that? Oh. Of elbow. What page is that on? Look at you guys flipping through your magnificent, magnificent sort of thing. Oh, uh, 522. Okay. All right, so remember there, that's in chapter 10 in your essential science book. They'll tell you where all the muscles and stuff are and what the normal movement should be. What, what should it be? With the elbow. Zero to 90 and a little. 90 and a little. It does that. Now, I didn't have to go assess. <laughs> you might have to do that when you're learning. But right now, you know, I've done this a hundred thousand times. So many of your positionings become your assessment. All right, then I'm going to bring that across, which is another movement of the shoulder and the scapula. So I can get to this lateral thorax. Which so often gets missed. 
the drapings was pulled tight across the, across the back one. Yeah, <laughs> make sure that that's tucked under the head. Now that's pulled tight, then this becomes the anchor. Now, as we move more into dealing with common conditions, lots of people have breathing issues. And you've got to get them on their side to get a, a hold of that. I'm going to bring this arm back up. Now I can move the whole scapula area. So there's a whole section in that book about scapular movement. What's upward and downward rotation? So forward back. This becomes a pull. Forward, wash my legs. Back. Forward, back. Not in my arms, it's in my legs. Now that position that right up a hill for me. Right there. Now, even though Luke's being a demo, and I'm talking over, which wrist did you wear? So technically I should have assessed the other arm first, but life happens, right? This wrist bothers him. So what I might say is while I apply pressure to this. Can you roll that in a circle? Roll it in a circle. This is what I did to you, Amber. Mm -hmm. Before you before you asked him to move, he was automatically like starting to do that, that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Now I didn't do a formal assessment on that right at that moment. We knew about that. We did that before he even got on the table. So. And can you bring that up? So this is active. Does that hurt? I can touch range. All right. Push up against my hand. Push, 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 keep going. Does that make it hurt less? Or is it about the same? A little less. A little less. If it hurts less when they contract, it's soft tissue more than joint. Those are just little things that you'll you'll learn. We go the other way with it. And having him do the movement because um, it's injured, and I it want a, a level of protection with it. Move it down now. That doesn't bother. At end range. All right, and then roll it in a circle. Right there. All right. So we're going to use that same thing I did on his hip. I'm going to hold it still. He's going to move it. And then um, I'm going to have him hold it still, and I'm going to move it and see if we can just have a general, you know, it's like a shake the wrinkles on. So when you do that, you take it to the end range and the end range and go right into the middle. That's called the loose pack position. I'm gonna hold it still. I'm gonna show him what I want him to do. I want you to move it like that, okay? Go ahead. And then go the other way. It should never feel sharp. Okay, now you hold it still and I'm going to move it. This is more aggressive. Let's hold it still without fingers clenched. And then you move it and I'll hold it still. So this is an intervention. This is trying to shift something. Okay, and go ahead and move it and see if it's different. You have to hunt for it a little bit? Yeah. 
that they have to hunt for it a little bit, there's a little bit of a change. Okay. Just like with the feet, don't forget the whole hand. Don't be afraid to move them around. So he's got limited range with that arm, so I just moved it out of my way. I'm gonna get in here. This is the better way to do this push pull on the back. That feel good? Then you can. Now, is it that side, Luke, or the other side where you it was up into your head? Uh, the left was up in his head. Yeah. So all but of. But when she's pulling, she was. I'm getting right underneath and getting into it. All of this attaches way up here. So you, you know, if anybody's got any neck, shoulder, mid back, you've got to get into the head area, and this gets messed. Good job. Camera can see what you're doing. Again, muscle structures, frontalis into the scalp, goes into the occipital muscles here, which attaches to everything up here. And then people who are they grind their teeth a lot or if they're in any kind of discomfort. So that's the jaw muscles, muscles of mastication up into the temporalis. And then I can say open your mouth. Ah, uh, that's making it longer, clench your teeth back and forth. So that's inhibitory pressure plus what? Movement. Now, I don't do a lot of the pretty facial massage. You can, you certainly can, especially you being an esthetician. I'm always focused on um, that idea of normalization of the tissues. Um, but you do have to massage the face and the scalp thoroughly because there's so much that goes on there. Right here is a common spot for lights. A lot of stuff attaches right there. So a broader, the more focused a point, the broader your contact. So I'm gonna use this part of my arm right there. You won't be able to see it, but right there. That's safer. And then, like you saw with Laura, I had him move his eyes. I had him move his eyes in a circle. Did you see me adjust my feet? Look at where I was. See my butt sticking out? <laughs> I'm leaning over on top. And so now, see how that's more stable? Most of the clients I have worked with like some traction on the scalp with the hair or some compression. You just gotta make sure that it's okay. That would be sideline. I would get this arm in this position. He doesn't have the range of motion. I know that. So. And then, so he reminded me of getting this refe right through here. Remember, this is where all of the tissues 
from the low back, from the sacrum, come into here, and then all of the stuff in the front comes over in the cold hand right there. So that area needs to be rolled back and forth with some pressure down. I'm doing the same thing with my forearm, which is my preferred method. And then what do I do if I want more pressure? I want them to help. What do I tell him to do? Just roll back against me. And then forward. I'm going to start over again. So as he pushes back, I brace myself with that back foot. So he said, oh, oh, yup, yup, oh, oh. When you hear that, just stop. Just stop and hang out. And then tell them to move in and out of it. Move in and out, in and out. This is inhibitory pressure plus movement. Now I could call that the trigger point of the well, lumbar, dorsal. lumbar dorsal something or or the uh, medial or lateral lateral fibers of the external oblique or what but I don't know those things are so smooth what's the important thing I'm on the spot and he's controlling the pressure through his movement. I am not doing this. I'm not doing, I'm just leaning on it and giving him something to push and pull against. But then I can kind of guide into and out of the spot more effectively too. Like if she's not, she doesn't have to worry about being perfectly on it, I can reposition. And find it. Now, if your arm is like this, that's a broad contact. If you want a more pointed, just lift your arm just a little bit. Just a little bit, not this. This, the narrower the point of contact, the more pressure it feels like. So sometimes people need that real pinpointed thing in order for it to feel right. Okay, so I'm just gonna have him roll quickly and show you a couple of things on the abdomen that I want you to incorporate and we'll be good to go. So you remove your ball. I'm not doing the other side. Let's no, pretend no. I did that. Um, get the bolster out of the way. I have them roll over and bend their knees. This towel goes right over here on the chest. <laughs> the client exposed themselves. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna show you to do as far as that rafe is concerned and on the abdomen, I'm gonna show you over the sheet or where you don't have to bring the drape down. So, see how I made a little um, opening. opening right through there. I'm going to come way underneath, way underneath. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. That feels so good. All right, now I'm going to lean back. That can be just enough, or I can add movement to it. Can you turn your knees the other direction? Now he's pulling his own tissues through there. Why people are fussy about the belly, I don't know. But, yeah, but really way back, I'm way back where his spine is at. Okay. Bring your knees crossed. Now, 
Now, when I come this way, I'm pushing it to reposition. I'm pushing it down. If I have them move their knees the other direction, it brings that right up so I can get to it. I want you to make sure you learn how to do that. Only thing that is left, because I have already done the feet, I've already done the calves, I've already done the side of the leg. The only thing that's left on the legs is the quads. And so I often won't even bother uh, bolstering at that point. I'll just do, do my thing. Um, especially if there is no major focus with that. And then you have to have a level of finishing. I already did the arms, so I don't have to do them again. Um, so you're going to learn that some of this stuff right here supports synthetic flow. And even with the movement, they're going to be a little drop. They'll lay on your table forever. So you, you need to say at about this time, I'm going to do a little bit more with your neck and head. And then I'm going to leave and take two or three deep breaths and then get up and meet me in the hall. Or they will not get up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to turn his head this way. That's a joint movement. Who's got the... And then I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to do a little bit more of this kind of movement through here. Get the forehead area. A little up. That's one of those movements. A little back. Rotation, you're doing huh? cervical rotation, cervical rotation, capital rotation. I got all that neck. Now, if I'm doing it in segments, this is the lateral flexion, this is the rotation, this is the capital, this is the cervical. <laughs> But I, I, when I'm going through this, no, the, well, that wasn't very good. But when I'm going through it rhythmically like this and I'm paying attention and I understand those movements, which one looks more relaxing to the client? This one or? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to learn to feel when you get through that. And that's only going to come with practice. I already did this side line. I tend not to get in through here. It may be because I'm sensitive myself about lotion getting in the way. So a little bit of rocking and shaking and we're done. Ta-da!